welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and today we are going to shed some light on mantras, manifestation, and those voices and how we talk to ourselves inside of our head. So I want to start with just what is a mantra? A mantra, by definition, is um, it's a word, a formula, uh, a chant. It can be a song, and it's sung as a, a prayer, an incantation, something that we're calling in for ourselves to be able to resonate with what that is that we're bringing in, with the vibration of what we're bringing in. Um, sometimes it can just be a word. It doesn't even have to be a whole phrase. So it could be just one word and you repeat that word over and over and over again until it basically codes into your system and uh, your energy fields basically. And uh, so, so that's basically what a mantra is. Uh, a mantra can also be um, a song. So there are a lot of songs and a lot of chants, and there's all different kinds. So you could do like, a, I don't even know, is it Hindu? Maybe it's Vedic. And uh, I learned some of these by just practicing. I went to a concert once by Krishna Das, and that was my first real experience with being gifted a mantra. And it, it's actually a funny story. I went to this, <laughs> I think it was in like 2000 or 2001, and I went to this, this concert at a yoga studio in Kailua. It's not there anymore. And Krishna Das was coming and I didn't know who he was. Um, and I didn't know what mantras were. And I didn't know anything about any of this. And they give me a piece of paper with all these words on it. Most of which I did not know how to, I didn't know how to pronounce them at all. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. And then they start talking and singing and, and there's these different instruments and these sounds that I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't familiar with these sounds and we get most of the way through this concert and this offering and uh, there's a song that comes up and it's Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And I've never heard this before in this lifetime. And I sang this word for word, beat for beat, tune for tune, without even blinking, without hesitation. It was already in my field from somewhere before. So this is a part of my essence. And of course, I went after and I asked Krishna Das, I said, what, what does that mean? <laughs> because I have never heard this before. And I just suddenly was able to sing it word for word. And it, it was amazing. And he explained that it was to the best of my um, ability to remember what he said was that basically, it's bringing in that divine and allowing that divine to come into your frequency and uh, where you are. And it's that divine light and unconditional love. And so I was pretty much dumbfounded. So that's one kind of mantra. Uh, another kind of mantra, I said it could be just one word. So it could be something like OM which vibrates with our third eye or um, our ability to be able to see the information that's gifted to us from the heavens. And you could just say OM over and over and over and over again until that brings a sense of um, 
of resonance within your frequency, within your physical body, your um, energy field around your body. Uh, you could say hue. I've had Dr. Zeal Okagari on as a guest before, and he does a beautiful workshop with the hue meditation. And um, that just sounds, you just say hue over and over again. And that is the unconditional love. That's very heart opening. And just the sound of it vibrates differently. And when I first started doing that, I could only do hue for maybe five minutes at a time. And then I worked my way up to about 20 minutes, 25 minutes of just constantly saying, you, you, So this is um, an example of having just a sound or a, a word. You could also say love, you could say abundance, you can say bliss, whatever it is that you want to bring in to your energy field. Um, and the word that's loosely used everywhere now is manifestation. So whatever it is that you want to basically create in your life, right? Into a physical form. That's what you're going to want to use as a mantra. Uh, another way to be able to get into mantras is through song. So there's some beautiful artists like Deva Pramal and Mitten. Um, she has a beautiful Mula mantra. And you can listen to her on Pandora or Spotify or YouTube. And you just go and you search up Deva Pramal. And you'll see, look up Mula Mantra, M-O-O-L-A. And you can listen to that. And you don't even really need to know the um, what she's saying. If it resonates with you, then you can just sing along with her. And um, and she just sings it over and over and over again. Funny thing was someone asked me how I liked that Krishna Das concert. And I was like, well, I mean, it was great. I had a really good experience, but it was very redundant, <laughs> which I cracked myself up because that's kind of the point is to say it over and over and over again. Um, and, uh, let's see another person that or another group that is beautiful is, uh, in the name of their group. It's called a beautiful chorus and, uh, hymns of spirit is a great album of theirs. And it's a group of women <clears throat> and they do different mantras that they've created that have helped them through different struggles in their life. Um, one that I love is I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. And I mean, you say that over and over and over again. And like I said, it codes you, it codes your energy system. Um, and it just feels good. It's lightning. It gives you levity. It lifts you up. And that's a great, so I would recommend that you look that up if you're new to mantras, or if you just want to listen to something in the background, you can uh, put on one of their albums, or if you do one of the platforms, then they'll start suggesting other uh, mantra artists, and you can just say which ones you like, and then have that on in the background as you're you know, getting ready for work in the morning or school in the morning or preparing for to go out to a dinner or preparing dinner even. Um, 
So you can incorporate these things into your daily life. It doesn't have to be super strict. Uh, it can be something that you're listening to and encoding yourself with casually and intentionally, consciously. So uh, another way of getting a mantra or a type of mantra is finding a mantra through a meditation or through a healing. Um, and then these mantras are usually very layered. Uh, I did some work with a very dear friend of mine, Ross Cook, and he actually has a book out called, um, oh gosh, what is it? It's Healing Before the Healing. So the healing before the healing, and it's through balancing. So basically what you do is you go through these different layers of what isn't serving you and you experience those layers emotionally. And then you find an affirmation, you find um, a mantra, you find what resonates with you. And mine was, is, <laughs> I yield to the flow and flow with life. I yield and flow with life. I yield and flow with life. I am genuinely good enough. And, you know, it takes a while to incorporate some of these into your being and who you are. And uh, I encourage you to stay the course <laughs> and experiment with all of the different types of mantras and affirmations and see which one uh, fits best into your life and fits best into where you are in your journey right now. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so like I was saying, the actual words of the mantra, they can be super powerful. And also, if you hear something that you don't understand and you just resonate with it deeply, I suggest that you know you look it up and you find out what it means so that you can find out why you're resonating with it. Um, but you could listen to these. Uh, different so songs by, you know, Deva Pramal or some of the other artists on YouTube. And you may not understand Hindu or uh, any of those Indian uh, based languages, but you understand the vibration. So don't get so caught up on the exact words and the exact, if you're saying them right or not, just even if you hum along uh, it it also is effective. And uh, let's see, so don't really get caught up on all of that. If it calls to you, do that. Listen to your knowing. Each of us has an infinite knowing. And uh, it's important for us to be able to tap into that and actually listen to what that is for each of us, because it could be one mantra uh, the same for you and for me, and very individually different in the way that it resonates in our energy field. So one thing uh, that I am, I want to touch on is that a lot of times mantras are said to be repeated 108 times. So why is that? And the basic reason, I would have to say, is that it prepares our consciousness for the realization of what that mantra symbolizes and what it carries within it. So you keep on repeating that and then you go ahead and you start feeling it on all parts of you, physically, energetically, spiritually, mentally, where our thoughts go, energy flows. So always remember that also. Um, also in Vedic traditions, they believe that 108, 108 is the basis of creation. 
And so these are basically the creation mantras, a creation chant. And so do repeating 108 times validates that for ourselves and um, for that creation. In Ayurveda, um, they believe that there are 108 vital life points in this journey from our material self, material self our earthbound self, um, and our spiritual self, that heaven that heaven sent self. So you've heard the word as above, so below, right? We are all familiar with our earthly bound, our earthbound bodies, and then our heavenly bodies. And so that's one way to be able to bring that spiritual self, uh, our spiritual essence of who we are into this earthbound body and be able to have that realization of where our where God resides within us, um, how we can feel our God self within our human physical earthbound bodies. Um, so one thing too that's a tool to be able to do the 108 times is it's hard. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to count on your fingers? Or are you going <laughs> to, it's like super hard. So you can listen to a song. Um, you can listen to Jason Gallant. He's one of the, um, he's got some great tools and videos out there that explains the mantra. And then he'll sit there and he'll chant for 108 times. And you chant with him for 108 times and you don't have to think about it. And it's a really great beginner's guide. And I would highly recommend that. So that's Jason uh, Gallant, G-A-L-A-N-T. And I think he's from Canada or something. So YouTube YouTube that guy. He's great. So you could do that. You can listen to songs, like I mentioned. Um, you can have a mala. So this is just a basic mala. Um, and you, <laughs> you hold these beads, and there's 108, and usually there's a tassel at the end. Let's see if I can show it like that. So there's a tassel at the end, and you do it each time. So you say, Om Gam Shri Mahalakshmi E Namaha. Om Gam Shri Mahalakshmi E Namaha. Om Gam Shri Mahalakshmi E Namaha. Or you could just say, Om. Om. Oh, and you can imagine the energy that goes into your mala. And you may have seen these. Sometimes they are just really beautiful with very ornate beads and, um, and really beautiful. They're just, there's like jewelry. It's like this beautiful um, chain or this beautiful beaded necklace and um, people wear them both men and women and the energy of as you are chanting and you're feeling each bead with each chant uh, as you keep going through it 108 times how many times a day sometimes they go for you know you do one chant for three months straight every day, at least once a day, uh, sometimes recommended twice a day, then you can imagine how the energy of those chants can go into your mala. And then you carry that around with you and it gives you that sense of security. It gives you that sense of carrying your prayer with you and a reminder of that. Um, I also want to make sure that I mention that Hawaiian chanting is also an amazing mantra tool. I've done some amazing work and studying with Kalei Nohea, Clay Horn on Big Island, Moku Keawe. Uh, she is just, she's an amazing chantress. 
<laughs> I don't even know if that's the right word to say, but um, she's so in her heart. She is so in her knowing. She is the, um, she's an epitome of bringing that heaven to that earthbound self. And I feel so grateful to be able to learn from her and that she's willing to share. And she can be found on Instagram also. Just reach out to me and I'll share her site with you. Uh, so those are ways to be able to you to have tools to be able to do your mantras. Uh, I want to talk about creating your own mantra. Um, and there's certain guidelines. I do a workshop on this in retreats and here at my home studio. And we do a, a mala making and mantra uh, workshop, which is beautiful because the point is, is that it's very individual. It's very unique to each one of us. So when you create your own mantra, First rule, rule number one, is always state what it is that your mantra is going to be in the positive, okay? Because that's what the universe recognizes. It recognizes energy. So if you're saying, I'm broke, or I'm busy, or um, uh, I want to get out of scarcity, then what the universe hears is broke, scarcity, busy, uh, and, and none of those things aren't what you're wanting to create, right? Those aren't the things that you're calling in to create. So an alternative to that would be, I am actively creating financial abundance, right? Feel how that feels differently. Or I am effectively and efficiently getting great stuff accomplished, you know, instead of saying I'm busy, because all that really does is create more busy, right? Um, also, another thing is to say I am and use those affirmative words so that you can stand in the power of what you are calling in and what your prayer is. And also one point about that too, that I'd like to say is that our true self, our essence, our, the part of us that is here without these thinking brains and all of the guards that we have up in our emotional selves is it knows when we're lying. It knows when we're telling the truth. So when someone asks you, you know, oh, hey, how are you doing? You say, I'm good. When really you're kind of having a hard time, but you don't want to go into it, you know, whatever, maybe find a way to say something a little more truthful. Like I am grateful, right? That's always a good one. So that's just a, a little side note. Okay. Rule number two with creating a mantra. Keep it simple, silly. Kiss, use the kiss principle. Keep it simple. So remember, this is an incantation. This is a prayer. Those could be long and they could be um, very poetic. And what you want is clarity, concise um, instructions to your essence, instructions that are clear to the universe of what it is that you want, that you're ready to create in this life. So uh, you could look up what seed sounds are, and you could even just do a seed sound. There's different seed sounds, and these seed sounds, uh, they resonate with different energy centers in our bodies. So you could do, there's lam, vam, ram, yam, hum, om, and ahom. So, you know, you can search those up and look at them and say, oh, okay, I'm really feeling like my heart needs some love right now. So I'm going to do the seed sound. And that's just a sound. And you can even just tone and say those sounds. And that can also be a mantra. Super simple. Uh, let's see what else. 
Uh, oh, so you could also go through those energy centers, right? So I'm just going to list off a few uh, mantras that could be super simple for different energy centers. So if we start with that root, right, the energy center that it really has to do with our security and our safety, you can say, I am safe. You could say, I am strong. I am moving with ease and grace. You can say, um, I am rooted, simple. It also gives you that sense of security and stability and strength. So moving up into that sacral energy center, you can say, I share. That's the part of us that relates to community that relates to being with each other, with um, experiencing being made human by one another. And that can be, I share, right? I share myself freely. I share my prayer. I share openly. These are super easy ways to bring in that sacral area. Uh, let's see, moving up into our solar plexus. I feel, really just, even just saying, I feel. You can say, I feel happy in my body. You could say, I feel secure to have my feelings. Move up into the heart and say, I love. I love completely. I love abundantly. I love infinitely. Moving up into our throats. I express, okay? I express myself clearly. I express myself with love. I, ex I express myself with acceptance. Um, notice how I didn't say without judgment, okay? It's a little clue there. Uh, third eye, I see, I see the gifts all around me. I see my essential knowledge. Um, I know moving up into our crown, I know my sacred wisdoms. I know myself. I know I am guided, um, by my true essence. I know my purpose. So, I would encourage you to meditate with any of these options for mantras and making your own mantras because ultimately, and, and it can be a progression, you know, you can, there's so many gifted people and artists out there and teachers and spiritual practices that have mantras in them. Use these tools. Uh, reach out to me if you'd like to. I would be happy to um, give you information about our next workshop or even just chat about how we can um, explore that together and find what your personal mantra is. So um, speak to yourself consciously. Uh, remember that the words we use are prayers incantations, our uh, thoughts mean things, where our thoughts go, our energy flows. So be conscious with that and um, go out into the world and be that light that you are from the inside out. Thank you for your interest in mantras and how that can be a wonderful addition to how we realize ourselves energetically in this life. I'd like to send a shout out to Think Tech Hawaii, all of our sponsors and our donors for keeping this platform open for us to be able to share this information and to have discussions and conversations around how healing and wellness can be revealed in each of our lives. Until next time, namaste.